Welcome to part two. So uh, we've already uh, selected an instance and uh, now we're ready to actually get in here and start working. Um, so one of the kind of cool things that is is great is that uh, you can post a introduction and I thought I'd just come over and grab this introduction by Kathleen Fitzpatrick and I'll show you mine in just a moment but you you can see that uh, she has a introduction and she has hashtag introduction and that's important to include um, in your any post that you do or any toot that you do on on Mastodon because that way people know that that's your introduction there's also um, uh, you see she's talking about mesh research and humanities commons and um, so she has her whatever she's interested in uh, whether it's scholarly communication and I want you to notice that she's trying to uh, use something called camel case here and that's where you've got capital letters although I think she missed on the scholarly one and communication is capitalized and the reason for that is that there are folks on Mastodon that uh, um, are using screen readers uh, they're blind and they need to be able to uh, hear hear what um, things are th about so by instead of reading scholarly communication as one word it, um, a screen reader will will say scholarly communication and put a little that that division there so just make sure that that you uh, try to remember to be sensitive to that. You can see here Humanities Commons is, is a good example of, of Camel Case and how it can be used. Now I promised I'd, I'd share with you my particular um, uh, introduction on a different uh, instance. So I'll, let me pull that up. Now uh, just like Kodo.org is a, um, a community um, the community I joined, as I mentioned before in part one, is hcommons.social. And as you can see here, I have um, the login screen up on, up on the page. And uh, the reason I didn't introduce you to hcommons.social is that they've temporarily paused registrations. So I have found hcommons.social to be just a really fantastic instance uh, to be at. Unfortunately, they're, they're paused and um, th there's no point in bringing you here if you can't sign up. So I'm going to go ahead and log in, and I, as you can see, I've it's popped up a message for two-factor authentication. Now, if you're not familiar with multi-factor authentication, this is just a way um, to prevent unauthorized people from logging in. So what's kind of cool about this is that um, you're protecting yourself uh, from people accidentally trying to spam or, or log in um, or hack your account and even if they manage to get your username and password uh, they won't be able to uh, get past that multi-factor authentication okay as you can see this is essentially what um, my profile or really my home screen looks like I'm using a simple layout here and this is something that you can designate in your preferences. Um, but over here on the left-hand side uh, is my profile picture. I'm wearing my uh, my uh, Fiesta hat, and uh, I'm going to click on my name, and so that way you can see what my profile looks like. You can see I've uh, sort of filled it out um, with information. I've added a lot of hashtags to my, uh, along with a short description. Um, here and you can see when I joined. I joined November 6, 2022. I have been on other Mastodon instances before. I'm starting to think I'm a little bit of a jumper. jumper. <laughs> um, uh, going from instance to instance, but I learned, I've learned something new every time. I have about 900 posts, 878 people that I'm following, and 655 followers. So I'm pretty well established here and um, I'm probably not going to move, but I just thought I'd, like I said, I wanted to walk you through from scratch what it was like. So I'm going to edit my profile because I want to be able to sort of just copy um, the information that's that's here and and then uh, jump into um, back here to, to uh, Koto. Um, 
Let's see, I want to close out some of these windows. Here we go. Okay, so I'm going to come over here um, and edit my profile. And it's going to ask me for my display name, my bio, etc. So I'm just going to paste in my text here um, that I copied over. Um, and then I want to also grab my display name. And just for the sake of consistency, avatar picture is going to be my profile picture there we go and I do not recommend this option of lock account which requires you to manually approve followers um, I mean you could be really restrictive here but if you're just getting started you want to follow lots of people and allow lots of people to follow you and then if you so choose you can go back and sort of block them or or not or unfollow them but locking the account just adds for a bit of a pain. Another key point is that it prevents other people from adding you to uh, lists. So if you're really into education, ed tech, a particular aspect or topic that you're interested in, they can't add you to the list until you approve them. So I, I don't care for that, uh, so I don't recommend it. I would not uh, check that this is a bot account unless it is a bot account, but if you're going to be using this as your new space, then you probably uh, definitely don't want to um, check that. And they want if you want to list this account on the directory, the profile directory is another way by which your account can reach a wider audience. So I'm going to come back over here to uh, here, and you can see that I have this um, checked off on on this account. It's I'm choosing not to hide my uh, thing and I'm gonna go ahead and select that here so that was a feature I didn't pay attention to when I first started up so I'm gonna select that here and then it's gonna say profile metadata so you can see I have some profile data here so I'm just gonna copy it over and of course I mean you would probably be typing this information in or 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 pasting it in but um, what's kind of interesting is that some people you also use this space as a way to uh, make connections or to send a, a message um, so I don't have that example handy to show you but uh, it, it is a it was pretty interesting um, oops, looks like my pixel fed is not there. Um, okay, so I've gone ahead and copied in all my links so people can f find out more about me. And you can see that there is built-in verification for Mastodon. Of course, you have to have access to a website that you control. Um, you can verify yourself as the owner of the links in your profiles metadata for that the linked website must contain a link back to your Mastodon profile uh, the text content of the link does not matter so that would be something that I could place at any one of these websites and eventually Mastodon would figure out oh this is verified um, so up to you as to whether you want to do that or not it just lets people know that you're a verified owner of a website and who you are. Um, I'm going to go ahead and click Save Changes. And at this point, um, you'll see that I have moved to a different account, moving from a different account. And so 
if you're, I'll, I'll probably do this in a separate uh, tutorial, but uh, if you are already at a Mastodon instance and you want to move to this one, if I want to move from H Commons over to this one, then I would probably need to create an account alias and then move things over. Let's talk a little bit about, um, in the time we have, uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, some of the other pieces here. You can see that there are something called featured hashtags in your preferences and this is where you can actually come in and type in um, some of the um, uh, hashtags that are relevant to you. I definitely recommend typing in education and edu tutors because that's going to connect you to lots of different people. I would also type in TCEA. I don't know why. Hmm. And uh, um, EdTech uh, as as some things that would be of interest. So this this makes it easier for people to find you and see who you are. Um, so definitely worth including uh, hashtags and you can continue to add lots of different ones and of course I added a whole bunch to my profile so there's a lot there. Um, here are some other preferences that you might want to check out. You can see there's different themes, different looks that you can adopt. Uh, if you like dark screens you can definitely do that. Um, there's also a web interface and the web interface actually gives you that tweet deck look where you've got multiple columns of information. I like to keep it simple so I'm, I'm on the simple side for this. You also have slow mode uh, that you can turn on and um, let me save my changes here. And you can see that in my uh, H Commons account, I have turned on slow mode and autoplay animated GIFs. Uh, so I'm probably going to do the same thing here. What's nice about the timeline updates is that you have to click on them bef bef without them ha just automatically moving your feed. It almost looks like someone else is reading your screen. There's uh, lots of other things here. You can um, turn confirmation dialogues on. Do you want to do this? Yes or no? Uh, and then you can hide media marked as sensitive or always show the media or always hide the media. And then you can also choose to expand toots marked with content warnings. Since you might encounter inappropriate content um, depending on who's uh, part of the server or who other people are following, I, I think it's probably best to leave that unchecked. But you're an adult so it's your decision. Uh, there are also some some other uh, tools that you can uh, add uh, favorite domains. So, for example, I might want to add H Commons Social is one of my favorites. Uh, Mastodon Social. Uh, so, lots of just different ones that you can add. These are other places that just make it easier for you to search and explore. Uh, what are your favorite hashtags? And again, these just are can be a, a mirror of the other ones that you want to use. And uh, I think edu tutors. Okay, so I've added a few there. Um, you can choose to opt out of search engine indexing, hide your network, group boosts and timelines. You'll see there's uh, posting privacy when you first post something. Uh, one cool feature is that you can post in different languages, which is kind of cool. Um, so if you're typing in one language, if you wanted to always post in English, you could choose to do that. Uh, it will actually translate for you. I remember seeing somebody discovering that and was like, whoa, that's so amazing. And it is. It is pretty amazing. Now, what's cool about this site is that you can also use something called Markdown. So if you're familiar with Markdown, um, it's pretty pretty nice uh, tool to use. You can always use plain text, um, but Markdown allows you to bold and italicize and do all, lots of different things. Um, there's follow buttons so 
I would like to include that. There's subscribe buttons, reflect the following status. So uh, just lots of different tools. Now, you, there are people from all over the world here, but if I, f I think that since I can only read English and Spanish, I'm only going to allow English and Espanol, and that's it. So I'm going to go ahead and save those changes. As you can see, there's just a lot of stuff here. Um, I don't have a lot of people that I'm following right now because this is brand new, but if we were to look at how many I have over here, I've got quite a bit. Now, how, do, how would I get all of these over there? Well, one way to do it is to actually uh, take advantage of export. So I could come here and export every one that I follow. And uh, it's going to say following account CSV. And so then I would be able to come back down here to import export. And uh, under the import, I could import my following list. And this is where I could um, go out and just grab or, or find that, that following accounts. And I'm going to merge it and hit upload. And so now um, in due time I'm going to when I come back to my follows and subscriptions uh, the people I'm following this is going to explode. There's going to be just a lot of a lot of people uh, that are going to show up on this list. But for now it's pretty pretty vanilla. Dr. Fremo is actually uh, the one of the administrators here at Kodo, so that's why he appears there without me having had to do anything. There are a lot of other features here and you can sort of explore them, but we're going to go back to Mastodon real quick. And now you can see that um, here are all of the um, posts are starting to pop up. There's not a lot popping up because, well, um, I'm not following a lot of people yet. I'm going to click on local and uh, you, now I'm starting to get a few more and then if I go to federated I'm gonna see even more so lots of, of content that is showing up and federated again is just showing me the fire hose of everybody that's out there so there's also a Kodo journal announcements which I want to follow and as I see things or see people that I want to follow for example Stoddern I don't know who that is they haven't updated their profile I can always come in and click on the follow button uh, or on this particular one I can subscribe to their content via RSS uh, or again follow so that's a those are some different features than what I have available here on H Commons social but you can see um, here's my age commons I've got a lot of people here um, that I'm able to follow and and see what that's like I'm gonna go ahead and end this recording because I've really gone over time on this one